Hello, my name is Ben Cravat, professor in the Department of Chemical Physiology at the Scripps Research Institute. This is Dan Nomura, a postdoctoral fellow in our group and lead author on our recent cell paper. We are going to take you on a brief tour of this paper and discuss the major scientific questions that it addresses and its principal experimental findings. In this paper, we identify monoacylglycerol lipase, or MAG lipase, as an enzyme that is highly upregulated in aggressive cancer cells in primary human tumors. We show that MAG lipase controls fatty acid metabolism in cancer cells and through doing so regulates an array of pro-tumorigenic signaling lipids that support cancer pathogenicity. It has been known for quite some time that cancer cells undergo multiple genetic and metabolic transformations in order to progress from a normal cell to an immortalized transformed state. The cancer cell must then acquire further changes that confer malignant and aggressive properties and are the hallmark of the most debilitating types of cancer. Much is known about the early changes in fundamental metabolism that accompany cellular transformation, including a shift to dependence on glycolysis, commonly referred to as the Warburg effect, and lipogenesis due to robust elevations in fatty acid synthase. The metabolic changes that support cancer malignancy, on the other hand, have not been well established. In our study, we aim to search broadly for conserved changes in the enzymatic proteome that contribute to cancer pathogenicity. We hypothesize that important metabolic drivers of malignancy should be shared among aggressive cancer cells from different tumors of origin, given that these cells, despite their diverse background, also share key biological features, such as high migration, invasion, and tumor-forming activity. We therefore set out to compare the enzymatic proteomes of a panel of aggressive versus non-aggressive human cancer cell lines from melanoma, breast, and ovarian carcinomas. For these studies, we used the chemical proteomic strategy termed activity-based protein profiling, which employs active site-directed chemical probes to broadly assess the functional state of enzyme classes in native proteomes. Each activity-based probe contains a reactive group that targets a specific enzyme class and an analytical handle such as a fluorophore or biotin for detection, enrichment, and identification of probe-labeled enzymes. Shown here is a representative gel displaying serine hydrolase activities detected in a panel of human cancer cell lines. Note that each band corresponds to a probe labeled enzyme, and by moving horizontally across the gel, we can identify enzyme activities that are altered in aggressive versus non-aggressive cancer cells. One such enzyme activity was monoacylglycerol lipase, or MAGL, hereon referred to as MAG lipase, which was highly elevated in all of the aggressive cancer cells relative to their non-aggressive counterparts. MAG lipase migrated as a doublet in cancer cells, and its identity was further confirmed by pretreatment of proteomes with the selective MAG lipase inhibitor JZL184, which completely blocked probe labeling of the two MAG lipase bands. The consistent upregulation of MAG lipase activity in aggressive cancer cells intrigued us and designated this enzyme as a high priority target for in depth investigation. As its name suggests, MAG lipase has been previously shown to hydrolyze monoacylglycerols in normal tissues, but the role of this enzyme in cancer was not understood. We next examined the role that MAG lipase plays in cancer metabolism by disrupting the function of this enzyme in aggressive cancer cells using either the inhibitor JZL184 or RNA interference probes. As expected, blocking MAG lipase led to elevations in monoacylglycerols, but this was not the only metabolic change that we observed. MAG lipase disruption also decreased the free fatty acid levels in cancer cells. This result was surprising because MAG lipase does not regulate fatty acid levels in most normal tissues. Thus, cancer cells appear to have co-opted MAG lipase for a distinct metabolic purpose, which given the pervasive role that fatty acids play in cell biology, we hypothesized might contribute to cancer pathogenicity. Consistent with this premise, blockade of MAG lipase also decreased cancer cell migration and in vivo tumor growth. Impaired survival and invasion effects were also observed, but are not shown here. We interpret these data to mean that MAG lipase fatty acid pathway is required for cancer cells to maintain a pathogenic phenotype. We next inquired whether heterologous expression of MAG lipase in non-aggressive cancer cells affected their fatty acid metabolism and pathogenicity. Indeed, this proved to be the case. MAG lipase expression resulted in lower monoacylglycerols, elevated fatty acids, and conferred aggressive properties such as increased migration and tumor growth in vivo. We interpret these data to mean that MAG lipase fatty acid pathway is sufficient to impart a pathogenic phenotype on cancer cells. In efforts to explore the mechanism for the protumorigenic function of the MAG lipase fatty acid pathway, we discovered that the fatty acid products of this pathway could rescue the impaired migration of cancer cells with disrupted MAG lipase activity. 
Similar rescue was observed in vivo, where a high-fat diet fully restored the tumor-forming potential of cancer cells with disrupted maglipase activity. These data suggest that fat-rich diets may exacerbate the malignancy of tumors that lack an autonomous lipolytic pathway. Having found evidence that the fatty acid products of maglipase promote cancer pathogenicity, we next examined how this might occur. Using untargeted metabolomics, we found that the maglipase fatty acid pathway regulates a much larger network of secondary lipid metabolites that includes protumorigenic signaling molecules such as prostaglandins, ethylipids, and lysophospholipids. These data suggest that the maglipase fatty acid pathway regulates cancer pathogenicity, at least in part by promoting the expression of an array of protumorigenic lipid signals. We hope you enjoyed reading our paper and look forward to any feedback.